I needed a telehandler in order to build the ultimate man cave, but said telehandler I can't afford unless I picked one up that had a blown engine. That's what I did. I did a three-part series on how to tear the engine down or what's involved, what was wrong with it. Be sure to check that out if you want to. We're starting the new series on putting it back together. So let's get started. Ryan's Mobile One. With the block and the head all stripped down and looking like a rusty mess, I hauled them to the machine shop. They gave them a bath, cleaned them up, decked them, put in new sleeves, and I got them back looking like this. It's supposed to be in there. Yeah. Oh. What That's do you think? No engine. That's a small opening for getting an engine in and out, isn't it? Pretty crazy, huh? Are you doing the sprinkler in there? <laughs> So we've got a block, a head, a bunch of loosely organized parts sitting on the floor, a gasket set, the rest of an engine rebuild kit, and an empty telehandler to put it in. First thing you want to do, or first thing I do, is lube everything up, check some specs, and stuff some pistons. It's one of my favorite things about doing engine building is there's so much that's clean and exact and precise. It just tickles me. I <laughs> just love it. Remember when I was first doing engines, I saw these, I thought, these don't even look like bearings. There's no rollers, there's no balls, there's no needles, there's, you know, like needle bearings and U-joints. There's nothing. What the heck is this? But yeah, they're bearings. Actually, oil bears it, or supports it. There's a film of oil between the two. Ta-da! Let's go play. Alright, this is the messy part. Take oil, and you just basically pour it in the piston rings. I use something that's a little bit thinner. Not because it's rocket science, just because it's thinner. It gets in there better. You just move the rings around. This just ensures that they don't bind or get stuck. If you move them all together, you maintain your gaps. And loop up the piston wall too. And the biggest thing, just make sure that your arrow is pointing to the timing gears. Down around this bottom tapered section too. It's got to be able to slide down through the piston ring compressor. Do one more check on all your rings. And of course you've got one or two that are not going to be right because there's five on this. That looks pretty good. So we're doing cylinder three first because I arbitrarily grabbed number three. So we've got the arrow. It's pointing to the front of the engine where the timing gear is. Let's drop that in there. Connecting rod's pretty wide. So just line it up. If you support it and get the weight off of it underneath, you'll find it goes in easier. There we go. Just try to keep it square and lined up pointing forward. You'll thank me later when you're hooking up your connecting rods. Don't worry about getting oil all over your piston ring compressor. It's bound to happen. You just put it around the rings. On this one you gotta line it up all the way at the bottom. Good piston ring compressor practices are like paper airplane practices. You really gotta line up your edges here. Because it pretty much spans the whole thing. Just let it get it to where it's nice and snug, and then go a little more apparently. If you use a back handle of a rubber hammer, and they just kind of go in. I failed to line up this back edge. That created a gap under here, and it spat out part of a piston ring. If you find that you're hanging up, try tightening it a little bit more. And also try... I lost it. It's usually because there's a ring that's sticking out. If you lose it like I just did, it's not the end of the world at all. Just push it up a little bit so you've got a little room for clearing. You don't have to go all the way up, just a little bit. Double check, nothing turned or lined up with each other. Any dumb stuff. Nice and flush on the block. See this one sticking up? Just tighten her down, double check your arrow. And you can turn them, it's not the end of the world. It's really not that critical as you might think it is. I got a whole piston ring sticking out the bottom. I don't know if you can see that, but it's like separating. If I already hit that with a hammer, I would probably break that piston ring and be shut down for several days until a new one came. So take your time. They tell you on diesel ones not to put them in an angle and twist it and rotate them on the way you do with other ones. These rings are so stinking thick it'll bend them. It'll make them have bad characteristics while they're in there. I was supposed to be showing you how easy this is. <laughs> make sure to hold this nice and flush. Just gently tap it in. 
until we're flush like that. And repeat. I'm glad that was a little bit of a struggle. You won't feel so bad if you run into something like that. Should we do it again? Let's see if we can't get this one to just go right in. So you normally get everything compressed good. It's not a problem. Unless you drop your key to the piston ring compressor. You just gently tap them in. It's usually really uneventful. The tighter you get it the first time, the more square, the easier it is. If you see it just pop there at the end, piece of cake. I say one trick you can do is when you pour the oil on it, especially on the one with the little ring in the middle, if you pour the oil directly in that hole, it really helps it to get all around. These actually expand and contract just a little bit on each stroke. So you want some oil so that they can do that. Usually the rings don't wear out so much as the landings wear out, the little grooves in the piston. That's where the wear occurs on these diesels. And when you check it, there's actually little gauges or keys that you can do on them to see if they're worn or not. Each brand has its own proprietary means of checking it, especially on the top ring, compression ring. So we release. Boy, everything is so slick. That's a good thing. That's what you want. There we go. This thing barely fits all five rings. This thing is intense. Somebody in the back of the class is saying, no, camping is intense. Oh, ho, 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 that's bad. Crap. See what just happened? I torqued it too hard, apparently. What do you do with this now? It's pretty. It's all shiny and oily. For anybody that wants to know, that's an ever tough. <laughs> Harbor Freight because I wasn't sure if this one was big enough. We'll have to use the Harbor Freight one now. This sent me back $10. Let's see if it was worth it. If it'll get me through two pistons, it was worth it. Got me nervous. It doesn't feel like it's built as well, but you never know. See the rivets at the end? That's what failed on the other one. All right, we'll check my gaps. Yep, there's gaps. But they're not lined up with each other. We've settled all the way down. This one's wider. Well, that actually covers more than the other one. If the gear doesn't feel as good quality, but the band I think we're better off with. I think that'll go just the way it is, or I think we gotta get one more click. Harbor Freight one shining, saving the day. Bam, done. Got one more to go. Shine bright like a diamond. Sia fans, anyone? Alright, cylinder four. Let's see if the Harbor Freight tool is going to do the job. Save the day. Ooh, that hit. Yeah, if it bottoms out like that. Do yourself a favor, stop. Let's see if it'll tick. Yeah, a couple. Weird. Put oil on the cylinders before I did that. Cool. We've got pistons. One of the funnest things about putting the pistons in, there's a lot of parts involved. It's nice to have everything cleared off, cleaned off, and have those be in. Let's rotate this over. Rotisserie this pig. I use this to measure a lot of things that I'm doing, building, whatever, while I'm dealing with bearings, but this is so big compared to the measurements that we're dealing with on an engine build. When you look at this, it's got measurements between 0 0.025 millimeters and 0 0.076. So just to show you how small that is, that zero that you see right there, let's go to 0 0.02. I don't know if you can see that, but there's actually a gap there. It's just incredibly small. That's how big the gaps are in your oil journals. So to 0.7 is to there. 
So the way that you measure that is an ingenious method. It's um, actually plastic gauge comes up with something. You see that I've got something green, red, and blue. So the green goes from 0.025 to 0.076. But anyway, it takes you from 0.051 on the red clear through 0.076 to 0.152. And then when you look at the blue one, it kind of does the same thing. This is for really big gaps. So it takes you from uh, 0.152, you know, there's all this overlap to here, and takes you to 0.229. So anyway, these are the small ones, the medium ones, and the large ones. On this Perkins diesel engine, we're going to be using green plastic gauge. And the way that the plastic gauge works is you've got this, and you just tear that off the top there. And then there's a little, it's like a hair that's made of plastic. You see, this is the green one, and you crush that. Say, for example, I'll take it and crush it in these pliers. It spreads out, and however it crushes to tells you what the gap is. So when I squeeze these pliers, and we pull out the plastic gauge, and that gap is 0 0.051 millimeters. Like, almost exactly. It's probably like 0 0.049. But you're able to get these amazing readings by crushing the plastic in between the bearings and the crankshaft, for example. And that way you can verify that there is a clearance because it's such a small thing that you got to be precise and make sure that it doesn't touch. If your gap's too big, you don't have good oil pressure. If your gap's too small or touches, then it can cause it to not lubricate properly. So it's important to check these before. It's better to find out. It's a hateful thing to put all everything together, torque everything down, and then have to take it apart again. But it's better to find out now if there's a problem rather than finding out after the engine's assembled and the head's on and the head gasket and the sealants and the, everything's done and installed in the car. It's better to do a rough draft tightening everything down and then taking it apart to verify. So let's see how we did. So this is my rod bearing cap. This is from cylinder three. And this is my spec sheet. If you look right here, we use a metric system around here. It says, there we go, connecting rod bearings. So you look at the end, it says 0.03 to 0.08. So that's on the green spectrum. You look here, it says millimeters at the top and you see 0.038. And then the very bottom one, the skinny number, 0.076. So it needs to be between the two white ones. So when we take this and compare it, we're not quite as fat as the 0.038, and we're a little bit thicker than the 0.5, so we're tight. We're nice and tight. We're perfect where we need to be. And uh, if you look at these bearings, they say that this is 10 thousandths over. And the bearings read that, the connecting rod reads that, everything says that we're like dead nuts where we need to be. That's good. Let's check our main bearing caps. So I've torqued everything down, I forgot to mention that. Everything's torqued down, everything's in order. So we'll pull this one off and see what that shows. So if you look at the main bearing clearance, it should be between 0.05 and 0.11. So on the main bearing, you kind of see the smear there but it's the closest to 0.075 and 0.10. It's hard to say. I'd say that it's 0.09. Oh, I'd say it's 0 .09. That's my guesstimation and that's within the spec. So we're good, we're gonna put it together. As far as the specs for this go, that sheet that I printed off, I got for free on the internet. If you're rebuilding a Perkins engine, I mean, they're in taxi cabs in London. They're in sailboats in Japan. They're in tractors all over the world. So it's a really prolific engine. That's what prolific means is they find it everywhere. So naturally, somebody's gonna release a manual for it. I'll leave a link in the description below. I often give links for all the different tools and things. I'll leave a link for this plastic gauge, uh, but you'll also find a link down there that gives you all the specs for torque, clearances, etc. Pretty awesome. Bonus footage at the end.